It's just part of my language. I mean, you know, I've used it all my life. Some people refuse to give in. 66-year-old Leonard Carlo, who owns this bar in Colorado Springs, likes the F word. And this and that, I really don't give a f And he has lots of signs in his bar saying things like, No children, animals, tabs, or checks. And on the women's, it had women, and over there is the men's, and it had men. He just likes the word. So do many of his customers. It's a verb. It's a noun. It's everything you want it to be. You can make a sentence out of it. But one person complained to the state agency that licenses Carlos Barr. They got that one anonymous phone call, right? And the, they send the Gestapo down without this swastika. You came in like a stormtrooper, right? The state removed signs that said were offensive to the senses. The show is over, right? Carlo was told he could not use profanity in his bar. Said the state, where alcohol served, profanity could lead to fights. And the state's responsible for public safety. There's 700 other bars here, right? I find it hard to believe they aren't swearing in the other bars, but too bad for Carlo. The law is the law. A man's got to do what a man's got to do. Determined to have at least one sign the government will have trouble removing, he went to a tattoo parlor and on his head tattooed the words, You leave me the f alone. Of course, now this means Carlo could be forbidden to walk into his own bar. I love my country and I hate the government. And I do not think that you or they or them or any Everybody else has got the right to tell me what I can read and write and say, right? Well, clearly, if you're in jail, you lose some rights. Does that include your right to hurt people with your last words? Fred Treesh and 180 other inmates on Ohio's death row have been told by prison officials that at their execution, they will not be allowed to say any last words. Is it too much to let me say how I feel, say I'm sorry, or say a prayer? The court has shown great reluctance to Kevin O'Neill, who teaches First Amendment law at Cleveland Marshall College of Law, is helping him sue for the right to speak his last words. Humanity requires that when a person is about to be executed, they should be allowed to say goodbye. Humanity? These people were not humane themselves. That's true, but it's different when the government is doing the killing. He points out there's a long tradition of allowing those sentenced to death to give a last statement. It's when Nathan Hale said, I regret I have but one life to give for my country. I don't think we're asking that much. Trish put a gun in the mouth of an unarmed security guard and pulled the trigger. He's scheduled to die in the electric chair. Trish argues that Ohio's denying him something even vigilantes granted those they were about to kill. They asked him if he had anything to say. If they can give him the decency, why can't they give it to us? Wrong, Rocky. Every movie you see on TV, they asked him if he wants a cigarette. Thank you, gentlemen. Got anything to say? Do you have any last words? I ask your forgiveness for what I've done. When do you terminate my rights? When you kill me? When I'm dead? Ohio banned last words after the trial of Richard Davis, who kidnapped and murdered this 12-year-old California girl, Polly Class. We, the jury, find the defendant guilty of a felony. Murder. With the little girl's parents in the courtroom, Davis sometimes turned and made obscene gestures. Then, in his statement to the court, he claimed that before he killed the girl, she told him, Just don't do me like my dad. I have to pay my dues, so should you. Burn hell, Davis. There was no evidence that Polly was ever molested by her father. Davis's words only inflicted more grief on the family. Even though they weren't Davis's last words, it's the kind of vengeful outburst Ohio prison officials say they want to prevent. If I really want to talk bad to them, all they have to do is sit there and listen for a few minutes, and they're going to watch me die. The condemned are allowed to write last words well before their execution, just not to say them. But Ohio officials still haven't explained how they intend to prevent Trish and others from saying anything as they wait to be killed. Don't you think you can still hear me? Do you really think unless they cut our vocal cords? We're getting into extreme cases where no one has good answers. Let's move back to everyday life. When we return, censorship at work. What's okay to say about sex? In the office, watch your back. Someone may be offended by what's on your computer screen. They could sue. Yes. And win. Oh, they'd win. Wait till you hear the new rules for the workplace. When you can't say that, what's happening to free speech with John Stossel returns. I'm feeling lucky tonight. At the JCPenney Lucky 25 sale, get 25% off store wide. I'm feeling so darn lucky.
Plus, each store is giving away a $1,000 shopping spree when you play the JCPenney Lucky 25 Sale Sweepstakes. How's that dress? Uh, fine. Just fine. The JCPenney Lucky 25 Sale. Get 25% off. Get lucky. Get moving. <laughs> Looking for a great deal on a rental car? Don't worry. Then click happy at alamo.com. Drive happy. Say you're heading for the sun with your husband. I said your husband. Plus three kids and ten suitcases. With alamo.com, comparison shops, book your own car and save up to 20%. Even more in Florida. Don't worry. Drive happy. Click happy at alamo.com. Drive alamo. In families, it's like what's mine is yours. Everyone shares everything. Right down to the cold germs. With Kleenex Cold Care, you get three germ-blocking layers to help catch cold germs and keep them there. Hey, if there's one thing we can all be a little selfish about, it's our cold germs. Kleenex Cold Care, with or without lotion. Share the love, not the germs. I adopted Cece at five months old. We have something special. I can't explain. We're always there for each other. And Purina Cat Chow is always there for us. More than great nutrition, Purina Cat Chow gives us access to behaviorists, nutritionists, and vets who can help us with all kinds of cat questions. Thanks to Purina Cat Chow brand, Cece's healthier <laughs> and happier. Aren't you? Physical, emotional, complete. That's the Purina Cat Chow way of life. Dr. Scholl's next stop, New Orleans. So how do your feet feel? <laughs> That's pain. Well, this is our Dr. Scholl's massaging gel insole. It's like a spring. The massaging wave system gives you more cushioning than regular gel ever could before. It relieves tension in your feet. It feels like it's massaging the foot. Dr. Scholl's. Treat yourself right. Well? I asked my doctor about Lipitor. Ask your doctor what Lipitor can do for you. Or call 1-888-LIPITOR to learn more. Lipitor. The Rookies. The heroes, the legends in the making. The future of hockey is here. Sunday, it's Rangers Red Wings, Avalanche Stars, or Penguins Flyers. The NHL on ABC. Check it out. Sunday at 1 Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. TV Guide raves Jennifer Love Hewitt is totally Audrey. She's charming. Time Magazine agrees. Hewitt delivers a dead-on impersonation. She has it all and charm to boot. Delicious. The Audrey Hepburn Story, ABC Monday at 8, 7 central. You can't say that. What's happening to free speech continues. Once again, John Stossel. Sexual harassment's an ugly thing. It's not surprising that Congress passed laws to try to stop it, but what do those laws really do? You don't know my name, do you? Ever see that Seinfeld show where Jerry can't remember his date's name? What is it? All he knows is that it rhymes with a female body part. Nova? <laughs> At the end of the show, he finally remembers. Oh! Oh! Dolores! <laughs> After watching in Milwaukee, Jerry McKenzie told a co-worker about it. She didn't get the joke, so Jerry Xeroxed a page out of the dictionary. And I said, here's the word in question, and I pointed to the word. She looked at that and said, I know what that means. I don't want to talk about it. She was offended? Not that I knew. The following Thursday morning, she said, I need to tell you, you crossed the line. Mackenzie apologized, but they ended up arguing. The next morning, I came to work and I was terminated. His employer, Miller Beer, ironically sponsored that Seinfeld episode. Still, Miller fired Mackenzie. Mackenzie had been accused of sexual harassment before, and Miller fired him for poor management judgment. Once you've stepped over a line that the other person believes is offensive, you have to acknowledge it and back off. Company lawyer Frank Daly. What's the risk to Miller if you ignore her? The risk is you're going to be sued, and the recoveries are, are going to, in many instances, have been very substantial. It's the lawsuit lottery. Oh, yes. Big damages have been paid. They basically gave women a loaded gun that they could make any accusation they wanted and it was going to be taken as truth. That's not fair. The law says the victim has to prove her case. The, the conversations about sex... But proving your case can be quite a circus. 
Remember this? These hearings never determined what really happened, but they did put sexual harassment on the map. Clarence Thomas's career survived, but since lawsuits brought by an offended employee can cost millions, many employers find it safer to just fire the accused. That's what happened to Eddie Vega. He's an English professor who used to work at SUNY Maritime College until one day he allowed his students to pick a topic. One student, a female, uh, said, well, how about sex? You know, can we talk about sex? It was for a writing exercise, and some students used four-letter words. At the end of the class, had any student complained to you? None. If anything, they have said only good things, that it was a wonderful and enjoyable exercise. A month later, he was summoned by college officials. The, uh, the vice president he said, Are you telling me that these words were uttered in a maritime college classroom? <laughs> I said, Yeah. Uh, and he said, Well, that is pornographic. And that is sexual harassment. Vega was fired. His next job was a desk clerk in a little hotel. I spent all this time on becoming a college professor, and then in one fell swoop, it's ashes. SUNY Maritime wouldn't talk to us about Vega's firing. After three years, Vega finally found a new teaching job. Don't hold back. He encourages his students to speak out, but he holds back. He says he and other teachers must be very careful. What thought? will someone find so offensive that I will again lose my job. We've lost our freedom of speech. This sounds too grandiose, but this is exactly what freedom of speech is all about. Eugene uh, Volek, who teaches law at UCLA, says sexual harassment employers to become speech police. The government is doing exactly what the First Amendment forbids. It's trying to set up a nationwide orthodoxy in all of the nation's workplaces. It's trying to say, these are the jokes you can't tell, these are the opinions you can't express, these are the words you can't use. And employers are listening. You bet they are. Michael Bloomberg listened. Bloomberg rents out computer terminals that help people keep up with financial news. Doing this has made him a billionaire. So you'd think he could afford to let his employees say whatever they want. But sexual harassment laws frighten even him. Companies should be scared? Oh, absolutely. The list keeps getting longer of what kind of activities, what kind of conduct is and is not appropriate. Even your personal email isn't safe. It could be the two people are having a conversation where they don't mind the words. Somebody might walk by, look over their shoulder, be offended. Yes. They could sue. Yes. And win. Oh, they'd win. So, to be safe, Bloomberg put software in his computers that censor words he thinks someone, somewhere, might find offensive. So, Sleeping Beauty can't prick her finger on the spindle. That is true. No regrets about that? You don't see yourself limiting speech? Not at all. Oh, the, the, of course we're limiting speech. If your question is, do I have any regrets, do I think it's wrong, I don't.